So, howdy folks. This is going to be a, a quick little demonstration. I am in the process of putting new aftermarket bodywork on the FS. I'm going to put aftermarket graphics on this new plastic and put the originals away in storage just to keep them looking pretty. But this universal front supermoto fender from Atrebi doesn't really mount securely. So I figured what I would do is make up a little bracket. I've already drilled the holes for it. There it is. And then I'm going to use one of my favorite tools to install some roof nuts. These little things. So I'll do it this way. These are great for installing bodywork and brackets and other accessories. So as you can see, I'm going to... Actually, I'll do that first. I'll mark those holes with my little drill. So I keep them in the right place. And then, let's see, screw it into place first. Now this will make for a much more secure bracket. making a mess on my nice clean floor <laughs> after doing a lot of welding and grinding uh, actually speaking of which I'm experimenting with my new Nomar inspired tire changer so that slips down on this rod so it can't twist side to side so after I've cleaned that up and painted it uh, maybe we'll do a little demo. Anyway, so yeah, this is lined up. Now we just need to mount. I actually drilled that hole a little big. I hope it's still going to work. Okay, so this is like a lot like a, a pop rivet. Oops. Wrong way. So that's going to pull that down. No, I was right the first time. Let's do this. A little more. So the internal serrations, there we go, dig into the aluminum so it prevents this new threaded section from rotating and we can thread into really thin aluminum safely as a result. Where did I put that other one? There it is. So that'll give us a nice sturdy threaded section 
and the number plate comes down here so you won't even see any of this it'll just be nice and secure and the fender won't flap around in the breeze okay Takes a little bit of there we go. Do a little more. There, that looks pretty uniform. Okay. That is a riv nut. Also get some washers on these bolts that go underneath. Doing all this on camera makes me think of a time when I was doing some work for a customer in a dealership and normally I don't mind when people watch but this one particular time the customer had a very very nose uh, prox very <laughs> very close nose attitude and I was removing some bodywork took it off did the work did whatever needed to be done and then was putting all the bolts back in and while he had his nose right up next to my face I stripped a bolt and I never did that and as a result I think if I remember correctly I had to tell the customer to leave his bike there overnight so I could install <clears throat> a helicoil yeah look at that but that's my second favorite tool helicoils okay so that's installed much more secure I might take it off and just trim that across there but uh, yeah for now that looks pretty good uh, where's that front fender So that goes in there, and that bolts up right there, yep, so you can't even tell. Alright, just a quick one, in case anyone ever wants to know, ooh, how do I put some screw threads into this really thin aluminium, aluminium, there I go being all raised in Australia and all. Aluminium, as we used to call it when I was a kid, or aluminum, as the Americans call it. Anyway, so that uh, that is a nice, safe and secure front fender, universal mount, and ooh, that reminds me, look what else I got. I got some new toys, Scott's damper. That's going to be fun to install. I'm a big fan of steering dampers. And I have... These are the starter gears for my 520. When I hit the starter button, it makes this grinding, clacking sound. Which, of course, happened right after I finished its last rebuild. Uh, and... This new piece of accessory bling. This is the bladder for the WP shock. So I'll be able to pull the pull this body out. There's a piston in here with a very stiff 
o-ring around it so that as the oil in the shock moves up and down any uh, flow that can't be passed through the valving in the, on the shaft that excess volume is taken up with this piston so there's 150 psi of of inert gas pushing up on the piston and the oil in the shock pushing down on the piston and you want to do this because if you don't the oil can flow very quickly and easily and actually create cavitation which causes bubbles to form in the oil and it just turns into a froth by pressurizing this piston and pushing up against it it doesn't allow those bubbles and that froth to form but the problem is this piston is really stiff in the bore it just doesn't want to move up and down in small increments so it's really resistant to small motions this goes right here and it's not a piston it's just a rubber bladder and this rubber doesn't mind small movements at all so the theory is that you get better feel from the shock you get better contact more contact of the tire onto the road so if you've got more contact then you've got more traction and if you've got more traction you've got better drive and if you've got better drive you've got lower lap times so that can sometimes mean the difference between feeling comfortable pushing that little bit harder or feeling really uneasy about pushing harder and just not being able to so you back off you go slower and you're not able to put that pass on that guy in front of you because you just don't quite feel comfortable enough so that's the theory i'd like to ride this on the track before i install this so i can compare lap times and just uh, sensation just feel but i'm not sure if i'll be able to do that firstly it's so cold but uh, yeah, there's a cart track in Oklahoma, which is about two, two hours, like just a little over two hours north in Norman, which, I, which is actually where I used to live. And there's another one over at Crescent, which is also about two hours away. So we're right between those two. Uh, and there's also that 1.3 mile track at Crescent, which, would also, which is also fantastic for supermotors. But yeah, we'll see what happens. And uh, either way, there will be more information forthcoming. So thanks for watching.